In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today is the uh, second Sunday of Advent. Uh, this Wednesday we have the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, the uh, Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Epistle for today is from St. Paul's Letter to the Romans. Brethren, what things soever were written were written for our learning, that through patience and the comfort of the scriptures we might have hope. Now, the God of patience and of comfort, grant me to be of one mind, one towards another, according to Jesus Christ, that with one mind and with one mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive one another as Christ also hath received you unto the honor of God. For I say that Christ Jesus was ministered a circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. But the Gentiles are to glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Therefore will I confess to thee, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and will sing to thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and magnify him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise up to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope and in the power of the Holy Ghost. And please stand for reading the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, sending two of his disciples, he said to him, Art thou he that art to come, or look we for another? And Jesus, making answer, said to them, Go and relate to John what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead rise again, the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he that shall be not, not be scandalized in me. And when they went their way, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, what went you out into the desert to see? A reed shaking with the wind. But what went you out to see? A man clothed in soft garments. Behold, they that are clothed in soft garments are in the houses of kings. But what went you out to see? A prophet. Yea, I tell you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my angel before thy face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. John was the precursor, the one who went before our Lord, St. John the Baptist. And he had, he, he had gathered many, many of his disciples. And when, his Lord, when our Lord came, uh, he, he pointed him out. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. And St. Andrew, who was one of St. John the Baptist's disciples, he uh, left John and started following our Lord. And then he got Peter, he got his brother St. Peter, and uh, they gathered others, and then our Lord started to call his apostles to follow him. But St. Andrew, who left St. John to follow our Lord. But some of St. John's disciples uh, stayed with him. And uh, they didn't follow our Lord. Our Lord, St. John had told them, I must decrease and he must increase. So John's work was finishing. He must decrease. He doesn't need the disciples anymore. And now they need to go to our Lord. And some were still hanging on. And so St. John was in prison now. He could not baptize anymore. He could not really do anything. He was in prison. He was going to stay in prison until Herod, Herod killed him, had him killed uh, and martyred him. But he, he stayed in prison. So he still had his disciples there, and so he sent them to our Lord. And he sent them to their Lord and to our unit and asked him, told them to ask a question. Are thou he that, he that art to come, or look we for another? Are you the one? Because these disciples were still doubting. And St. John wanted our, our Lord to confirm that, yes, he indeed was the one. 
So the Lord worked all these miracles in front of them. He cured blind. He gave lame. He walked to the lame. He cured the lepers. He cured the, he cured the deaf. He, wrote, he brought the dead back to life. He did all these, and he preached the gospel to the poor. And so these disciples of St. John the Baptist are watching Jesus uh, do all this, and he says, go and tell John now uh, what, what you've seen. What you've seen, and, uh, and uh, go tell him that. And uh, so uh, they did, and John told them to follow him because uh, John didn't want uh, the, the kingdom to be divided. He didn't want there to be two heads of the kingdom. He wanted only one head, and there's no division. There should no be no, no, no division amongst us. That's what St. Paul tells the Romans today. He says, Now the God of patience and of comfort grant you to be of one mind, one towards another, according to Jesus Christ, and with one mind and with one mouth, we may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to be of one mind, of one mind, and uh, uh, all united. And so St. John wanted to unite his disciples with the disciples of our Lord, that they would follow him. We all have to be united with our Lord as the head of the church. And this is uh, one of the uh, notes of the church, one of the marks of the church, that it is one. It is one, and that unity is firstly in faith, that we all believe the same thing. We all have the same faith, and we have the same faith that St. Peter had. We have the same faith, faith that, that all the uh, saints have had in the past. That's the faith we have to have. That's the faith that leads us to heaven. There can be no other uh, faith, no uh, divergence in the faith, uh, no picking our own faith or choosing our own faith. This was the error of Martin Luther. He brought that in. He said, we just got the Bible. You read the Bible, and you decide what you want to believe. There's only the Bible, and there's private interpretation of the Bible. And, uh, so we get a division, and uh, he divided the church. Martin Luther did. Since then, the church has been more and more divided, with other people coming up and making more and greater divisions. And now, after the council, uh, we even have divisions created uh, by the Holy Father. And so uh, the unity uh, is not apparent. That's why we have to keep the traditional unity. We say we want to have that same faith that the apostles had, that St. Peter had, that uh, St. Anne had, that all the saints had. And we want to believe the same thing that the saints believe because we know that that is the belief, that's the faith that will take us and lead us to get to heaven. And then we have to have be united in the sacrifice, in the sacrifice, in the worship. And that's the the holy sacrifice of the Mass. That's why the Mass has to be also uh, one. It has to be one uh, throughout the world. It cannot be different in different places. It cannot be uh, different for one people and uh, different for another people. St. Paul says, your others no longer Greek or Jew, now you're all one. We have to be one in worship. So whenever we go into a Catholic church anywhere in the world, we should feel at home and say, yes, this is my church because it'll be it'll be the same everywhere the church will look the same maybe the statue of our lady will be on the other side that we have at home maybe a few things will be different the stations might be on the other side of the walls but it'll be the same it'll be the same uh, basically the same thing and uh, this is uh, what unites us in the same worship and so we have to be of the one mind and the one voice, and so we praise God with the same hymns, the same songs, the Credo, the Kyrie, the, the Agnus Dei, the Sanctus, the Credo, the Gloria, all these, we don't do the Gloria during Advent, but uh, all these same hymns, we're all of one, one voice, as St. Paul said, one mind and one voice praying to God. So this unity is an essential mark of the church, and so we have to keep this unity. And this is what St. John the Baptist wanted already in the early days. His disciples were saying, no, we want to follow you, John. We don't want to go over to Jesus. And he said, no, you must go over to Jesus now. You have to follow Jesus. My work is finished. His work was finished. He said, now go follow Jesus. And so they did. And they joined the disciples of our Lord. So we have to say, yes, we want to also keep this unity. And the only way we keep the unity is by keeping the same faith and the same worship. Now, normally, uh, the principle of unity is the authority. It's the authority 
and the authority can say, well, you're deviating here in what you believe. You're going away from the unity of the church. Come back and renounce that wrong error, renounce that error, and come back to the church. And this is what the church always did. And this is why in the late Middle Ages, they set up the Inquisition. The Inquisition to uh, find uh, people that were teaching heresy, people that were teaching errors, and tell them, look, you're wrong on that. You're not teaching what the church teaches. You're, you're, you're dividing the church. You're dividing the church. We don't want that division. And so you have to renounce your errors. And if they refuse to renounce their errors, well, then the Inquisition turned them over to the government to, to be punished. And then the government would punish them. And the only place that Inquisition was really successful was in Spain, because uh, the king and queen were supporting the Inquisition. They said, we don't want any errors, we don't want any division in our nation, in our, in our country. And this is why the Spanish Empire was wholly Catholic. It was completely Catholic, the Spanish Empire, because there were no uh, heresies or divisions allowed, no errors allowed at that time. Now, now, it's not the case, of course, but then they said, no, we want to keep this unity of faith and unity of our nation, and we're united in one faith. And this is uh, important to have that one faith to make the nation happy and holy. So now we have nowhere do we have this unity in faith. And the, the conciliar church has destroyed the unity in faith, and they destroyed uh, the unity in worship. Now, instead of keeping it in the language of the church in Latin, they have it in all kinds of different languages and with all kinds of different uh, 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 devotions and all kinds of different ways of saying the Mass. There's no unity. So you go into a Mass somewhere, you go into a church somewhere other than your own, and you don't know what's going on. You don't know that it's a Catholic church. It's not certain what type of church it is even. So we have destroyed this unity. We have to say, no, we must keep this unity. We must keep this unity of our mind. That we're all thinking the same thing. We're all believing the same thing. And we're all loving God and showing God that we love him. We're all worshiping him in the same way that he wants us to worship him. Not in some way we make up that we're going to worship him in, but in the way that he has taught us to worship him in. So this is what we're fighting for. And so we must continue this fight. We must see now that the world is very dark. We're coming up to Christmas. When our Lord was born in Jerusalem, and not in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem, when he was born in Bethlehem, the world was very dark. All around the world, the gates of heaven were closed, and there was no light in the world. The supernatural light. There was the natural light of the sun, of course, but there was no supernatural light. And uh, our Lord was the light that came in to the world to dispel the darkness and bring, illuminate this darkness, especially that was in its minds, and illuminate their minds with the true faith and uh, with the charity, with the true charity to bring them to the faith. But now that light is almost extinguished because those who are supposed to keep the light burning, the popes especially, have let, have let it go out. They've let that light go out. They've encouraged it. They've even blown it out. So this light is uh, very dim. It's only here and there in little places now. So we must say we want to still keep that light. We don't want the darkness to overwhelm us. We have to uh, stay in the light of faith. And so we got to keep learning our faith more and studying our faith more, trying to practice it more, and trying to spread it, trying to bring others through the faith. That's, that's very difficult because you bring it to the faith and you say, well, you, one thing you have to do is go to Mass. And they say, well, where's the Mass? And they said, well, we don't have the Mass. And, uh, that's a problem. So, uh, But we still have to ask Our Lady and through Our Lady's help to bring this light around. And we have to pray always uh, for the Pope uh, that uh, he might reignite the light and, and, and it will make it shine bright again uh, throughout the whole world. So let's not uh, give up and say, yes, we cannot we'll let the darkness overwhelm us. But we must uh, conquer the darkness by a greater faith and a greater love of God and uh, a greater hope uh, that, that he will provide again for us. So he will come again and he will bring us this. So during Advent now we want to uh, keep, our, keep our resolutions and try to prepare a place in our heart uh, for uh, our Lord 
but he can settle in our hearts, say, here, Lord, here's a place for you. Because when we went to Bethlehem, they said, we don't want you. We have no room for you. There was no room for him in Bethlehem, and you had to go out. St. Joseph had to go out and find a stable for him to be born in. We want to say, here, Lord, here in my heart, you can find a place to rest and try to make it, uh, as well as the manger that our lady arranged for him to be born in. Say, yes, Lord, I'm going to have my heart at least as as good as your major, that uh, you might be willing to rest in my heart and sanctify me and convert me. Because that's why our Lord came into the world. So let's ask Our Lady, because we can't prepare a place in our heart ourselves, we need her to help us. And as she was able to make that uh, uh, manger, that stable, a place suitable for our Lord, well, she can also make our hearts places suitable for Him. So we have to ask her to help us and take us and take us under her care and uh, lead us uh, to uh, more a greater love for God, that, that you might find a loving place to rest and sad on Christmas. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.